Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The contest to replace Nigel Farage as leader of UKIP has thrown the party into disarray after one of the favourite candidates was excluded from the race. The MEP Stephen Wolfe missed the deadline by 17 minutes to submit his papers to run. Three members of UKIP's executive committee have now resigned in protest. Our political correspondent Chris Mason is at Westminster, so this contest begins with quite a row. Yes, it certainly does. UKIP are rather used to blasts of internal turbulence and today has been a rather stormy one. They say, don't they, that a week is a long time in politics. Well, just over a quarter of an hour was a long time for Stephen Wolfe. He said the computer said no when he tried to submit his application. Now the executive committee of the party has said no, he can't stand to be leader because that application was late. Now he was seen as the front runner, but then again, it's not exactly been a good few months for political front runners, has it? Just ask. Boris Johnson. Amongst those who have resigned from the executive committee, there is a real sense of anger. They say that there is escalating megalomania and cronyism within the party. So now an assembly of the unknown, including Diane James, the deputy chair, uh, tried to replace uh, the, one of the most recognisable faces in British politics in Nigel Farage. And whoever wins faces a huge task and a huge question. Given that we are leaving the European Union, what now is the point of UKIP? Chris, thank you. Now, a party in pursuit of oligarchy, self-promotion and cronyism. That's the charge being laid at UKIP's door by three departing members of its ruling body. They've quit in protest at the exclusion of the erstwhile leadership front-runner Stephen Wolfe from the contest. He was blocked after he handed in his nomination papers late, but his supporters claim he's been the victim of a coup. Our political correspondent Michael Crick is in Westminster. Michael, it's quite a tale, this, isn't it? It is. And remarkably, uh, yet another of Britain's great political parties could have a, a woman leader uh, soon, as the, both the front runners for the UKIP leadership are now females. But uh, that may be a rather academic point, given that uh, the way things are going, there may not be much of a party left to lead. Supporters of Stephen Wolfe are absolutely furious about what's happened. Uh, they're talking of civil war, meltdown, collapse, even forming a new party. I mean, there must be absolutely cock a hoop in Conservative headquarters at the way things are going right now, with both the main opponents to the Conservatives, Labour and UKIP, in serious danger of going out of existence, and certainly right now in considerable turmoil. Six weeks ago, UKIP was celebrating the Brexit vote. One of the most extraordinary victories in the history of British democracy. We've got our country back. Yet now, some think they're close to collapse tearing themselves apart over who should succeed Nigel Farage. Until Sunday, barrister and MEP Stephen Wolfe was favourite. But then he submitted his nomination forms 17 minutes late. That gave enemies on UKIP's national executive an excuse to block him. Wolfe won't fight their verdict, but today said... The NEC has proven it's not fit for purpose and it confirmed many members' fears that it is neither effective nor professional. And three NEC members resigned over the decision, saying... We have witnessed an escalating megalomania that is detrimental to the functioning of the party. But Lisa Duffy, a UKIP councillor and party organiser, who's one of the other contenders for the leadership, backs what the NEC did. There was very clear guidelines. We had a 12 o'clock deadline to get our papers in. Uh, we were very clear when the money had to be transferred. It was very clear that you had to have been a member for a minimum of two years. My, my membership is 12 years continuous. Um, so they were very, very clear. But the favourite must now be Diane James, who nearly won the Eastleigh by-election three years ago. Last year, she said she admired Vladimir Putin as a nationalist and strong leader. Also standing is Jonathan Arnott. Well, I'm delighted to be a candidate. We certainly need a bit of unity in the party at the moment. I believe I can deliver that. And I think with the endorsement of Deputy Leader of the party, Paul Nuttall, today, I think I've got as good a chance as anyone of winning this race. 
Well, Nigel Farage, who still is officially the UKIP leader, refused to comment on today's developments, although he did tell me he thought many members would be angry at today's uh, decision by the NEC. His close ally, Aaron Banks, the millionaire who is keeping UKIP afloat financially, was a much more forthright. He said only UKIP could do it worse than Labour. There already is full-scale civil war, said Mr Bank. Banks. Maybe UKIP's run its course, and it's well known that Mr Banks has been thinking of setting up a new party altogether. The UKIP uh, Scottish MEP David Coburn said, all order in UKIP has broken down and 20 years hard work has been destroyed in a few weeks by a faction hell-bent on destruction. Rahim Kassam, who's a former advisor to Nigel Farage, says you've got party members burning their membership cards. And like many people today, he blamed the former Tory MP uh, Neil Hamilton, who's now a member of UKIP. He said, this is classic Hamilton. He'll just destroy everything around him. Well, Michael, thank you very much. And we're joined now from Cardiff by UKIP's group leader in the Welsh Assembly, Neil Hamilton. Um, Mr Hamilton, let's start where Michael left off there. Um, and civil war in UKIP, according to the donor Aaron Banks. Well, there's an uncivil war by a small number of people who are disappointed that their favoured candidate couldn't organise himself to get his nomination papers in on time. I don't think that that's a civil war. We've got six candidates in this leadership election. They all bring something to the party. And uh, they managed to get their nomination papers in on time. Well, he hang couldn't. on a sec. He was kept off the ballot by a technicality. No. He gives evidence no. that attempts at submission were made before the deadline. And that's a quote from him. The fact is, you've mounted a coup against him, haven't you? How, how on earth could I mount a coup against Stephen Wolfe? I didn't actually block the door to his handing in his nomination papers physically. Uh, he made the decision that he would submit his nomination papers minutes before the closed closure of nominations. If you take that kind of risk and something goes wrong, then you can't complain if it does. OK, so you I'm don't actually have to block the door, but you had people on the NEC who were able to count this coup on your behalf. On the no coup. He didn't actually conform to the rules that everybody else conformed to. Anybody who's ever stood for election knows if you don't get your nomination in by the due time when nominations close, you can't be a candidate in the election. And Stephen Wolfe, for some bizarre reason, considering that he's been uh, angling to become leader of UKIP for several years now, waited until the 59th minute of the 11th hour and there was a cock-up. So there's no coup, it was a cock-up and the cock-up was his. Well, the NEC ruling body made this decision today. Should they, do you think, be responsible for such a momentous decision when, according to the, the former leader, Nigel Farage, uh, they're total amateurs who come to London once a month with sandwiches in their rucksacks to attend NEC meetings that normally last seven hours? Well, I think that's a comment which demeans Nigel Farage and is an insult to the members of UKIP who elect the NEC. The NEC is not a politburo. It's elected by grassroots members. And if he's insulting the national executive, he's insulting the members. Well, it's no surprise you're quite cosy with them because, again, quoting Mr Farage, they're people with no qualification in business or politics who have given you, quote, a disgraced Tory MP, a route back to public life. So no wonder you're grateful to them. <laughs> well, it was Nigel Farage who personally invited me to join UKIP in 2002 with a view to being a candidate in the 2004 European Parliament elections. I didn't actually accept his invitation to be a candidate, but I did join the party and I've worked for UKIP for 14 years. But I'm used to getting abuse from Nigel. I just live with it. I'm getting on with my job as the group leader of UKIP AMs in the Assembly in Cardiff and we're making huge progress here. Well, you've had a spectacular falling out with Nigel Farage, clearly, and at the heart of that is an ideological difference, isn't there, about what UKIP should be about. And the party now is split asunder, isn't it? I don't know of any ideological difference uh, in UKIP at all. Uh, I've stood on the same policies in UKIP for 14 years and indeed I don't know of, of any real difference of opinion between any of the candidates who are standing. There are nuances, of course, and there are certainly people who think that the tone that UKIP needs to adopt is rather less of the Mr Angry in the future so that we can appeal to a, a broader proportion of the electorate and actually get people elected to Westminster in 2020. In Wales, we've managed to get seven 
elected to the Assembly out of 60, which is a great achievement. We're going forward next year for the council elections to win seats in Wales and elsewhere in the United Kingdom. Oh. And we have an RI on 2020 to elect MPs. OK, but what is the point of that, given that you've, you've won? I mean, Nigel Farage won on your behalf. I'm sure <coughs> you, you know, you've got the UK independence that you wanted. So surely you should pack up your bags and go home, shouldn't you? Well, UKIP started as a pressure group to get us out of the EU. We've become a fully-fledged uh, national political party. We stood in the general election in, in the UK in 2014 on a manif manifesto across the whole range of domestic policy. We were elected in the Wales Assembly elections just a few months ago here on a whole range of domestic policies. And we are now part of the domestic political scene. And yes, we've achieved or uh, are in the process of achieving our objective of taking the UK out of the EU. But there are many, many battles yet to be fought before that is finally sealed uh, in blood. And uh, in, even after we've left the EU, UKIP will be able to fight for the people who no longer have a voice from the mainstream political parties that live in the Cardiff Bay bubble or the Westminster bubble. We are a grassroots movement and we'll continue to represent the people. Neil Hamilton, thank you very much for joining us. Fatima. <laughs>